All right, the method of sections. Long trusses are often used to construct bridges, large cranes, large electrical transmission towers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The method of joints requires that many joints be analyzed. You basically have to go to each member's end and look at that joint, draw a free body diagram, and analyze it. And that can get really old, really tiring in a hurry. So another way that you can analyze a truss is by using the method of sections. That helps you kind of leapfrog over a bunch of members you don't care about and get to the important ones that you do care about. So how do we do the method of sections? Well, you're going to end up cutting a section through multiple members and keeping multiple joints. And when you keep multiple joints, all of a sudden you have distances that matter. So this is no longer a rigid particle problem. This is a rigid body problem. And that's, um, you know, getting back to the more recent free body diagram work you have done where you, you draw distances on there as well as angles. You have to draw more information on these free bodies, but they can get you what you want faster oftentimes. So this could be a potential start of a free body. I don't have all the distances drawn because I don't really know them all, but you can see here AA, I could keep the entire left-hand side or the entire right-hand side. And I kept the entire left-hand side because it doesn't have all these forces acting on it. Now, it does have this reaction vector over here, and I need to find it. And I hope you recognize that this free body will not get you that reaction. You need to know that reaction first. So you would look at the reaction of the overall structure or find the reaction by using the overall structure. And then once you know it, then it's going to be the same here on your free body, and that'll help you start getting these internal force unknowns. So if you only need to know the force in a few members, the method of sections can be significantly faster than the method of joints. The method of joints is slow, slow. If you're solving for every member, method of joints is probably fine. It's kind of the brute force computer type approach, whereas the method of sections is a much more elegant approach. Okay. Now, I'm not saying the method of joints approach doesn't have its... Merits, it really does. If you're going to solve for every member anyway, it starts to make sense to do the method of joints. It's kind of easier because the free body diagram choices are easier. But if you only need a few members, I would strongly consider the method of sections. Because you have to start getting a little kind of clever with your choices of free body diagram, students often avoid the method of sections, but I really can't stress enough how much time it can save you. It can save you a lot of time on a test. It can save you a lot of time at your work if you're going to solve something and you use method of sections over method of joints. The moral of the story really is you can use both in the same solution. You can do a little bit of method of joints in one spot, method of sections in another spot. I mean, there's really nothing saying, well, I have gone down the method of sections path and I, you know, I can't vary from that now. No, it's not like that. That's like some kind of, you know, Hollywood movie. You Once you've made a choice, you can always kind of go back on it. They're all valid free bodies. They're just different size free bodies, right? That's the only real difference between method of sections and method of joints or equilibrium of a particle and equilibrium for rigid body. It's like how much is on your free body? If, if size, if dimensions matter enough, then it becomes equilibrium of a rigid body.